Around 15 years ago, we started to think there was a real opportunity to improve Mallee farming systems. Uh, it had been a problem for some time that the Mallee farming systems, as distinct from uh, other regions, hadn't advanced to any great extent. In the other regions, we'd been very significant advances in productivity. Um, they'd moved into, I guess, improved farming systems, but that hadn't occurred in the Mallee. At that time, we'd had some degree of experience with Mallee type environments, and we could see in some trial work that we've seen quite big improvements in the ability to get uh, better water use efficiency, better disease control. And we thought the opportunity was there to, to move into the more wider Mallee areas to see whether we could uh, look at what's going on and come up with ideas that uh, or come up with farming systems that were going to work for that region. We'd, we'd known there was farmers there that were trying to do the right thing. We'd worked with them in the past, and but the kind of small incremental changes weren't really being adopted, so we thought that we really needed to look at a whole holistic approach to the farming system. And so we really wanted to look from the ground up from terms of water use, where the waters are going, um, what are the constraints to production in terms of uh, things like zero root disease, nutrition, um, biological issues in the soils. So we really were looking from the ground up. There's also some issues in terms of uh, just generally poor productivity. We're looking at when we started around 50% of yield potential for Mallee farmers. Um, and of course, what that has the effect is that you're not getting the profitability, so you can't put the inputs in and everything gets constrained. The other significant issue for the Mallee was that there was quite a lot of environmental issues. We had uh, quite significant soil erosion from you know, excessive cultivation. And uh, there's the groundwater recharge issues and salinity issues, which were starting to appear. So there's a number of issues that uh, really needed to be addressed, and that's what got us interested. The approach to getting this work done was really very much from the ground up and we're really looking at involving both the farmers, the extension people, the agronomists and the researchers all together because we realised we were looking at a whole system change and we needed everybody on board to, to see that happen. And so we set it up with a okay, committee driven system with a lot of farmer representation and we planned the, planned the research from that point of view. What we came out with was a series of, if you like, conventional research trials, um, farmer focus paddocks where there's quite, quite intense monitoring on farmer trials with farmer equipment, uh, also a series of you know, field days, the normal type of extension processes, field days, workshops, seminars, quite a, quite a range of these systems. But the, con the constant behind all that was to try and bring everybody aboard, get everybody involved, so they felt ownership of the situation. The role of the focus paddocks in particular was to spread the research and the adoption right across the Mallee because we say the Mallee, but we really are talking about a, a, a range of environments from the three states, from South Australia, Victoria and New South Wales. They are in, in some cases quite different, quite a range of um, rainfalls and soil types. So what necessarily works on one paddock doesn't necessarily work on the other paddock and so the idea of the focus paddocks was to try and get people understanding what would work in their areas. Field trials which were set up, or at least the research trials, were set up um, basically one in each state, so in, one in South Australia, one in Victoria and one in New South Wales. These were the, the core research sites, these were the ones where we were really investigating the basic fundamentals of what's going on in these systems. And they generally comprised of uh, tillage systems, so zero till versus cultivated systems, the cultivated being the, if you like, the district practice, uh, rotations from intensive cereals through to the um, use rotations of cereal, grain legume, and also the, if you like, the district practice of cereal pasture type treatments, and with and without different uh, fertiliser inputs. So again, district practice type inputs compared to um, high input systems, or at least what we call adequate input systems to drive the system, to drive the productivity to where we wanted to get it. In terms of the, the outcomes from the project, I guess the, the key issues have, have been in relation to things like the ability to intensify cropping. This is something we'd seen in other areas that have a, was a, very much an adopted practice and had a big impact on productivity and profitability. 
it was generally viewed that that wasn't possible in the Mallee. Uh, what the project tended to show was that it was in fact very uh, acceptable and could be achieved as long as you understood the constraints that were limiting it beforehand. So we saw things like intensive cropping, particularly in the Mallee intensive cereals because of the lack of other effective rotations or economic rotations. The use of zero till, stubble retention, that became a key component of it. And really both of those things together work together very much uh, to support each other. And that's where we're seeing the benefits. And the outcomes of that, we're, we're starting to see yields approaching yield potential, getting towards 100%, 90% of yield potential, which is what we were hoping to see. So yields was tending to move up in these Mallee areas as people adopted it. One of the, the key outputs was in relation to the, the total package where as we went into more intensive cropping and particularly intensive cereals, basically what we saw that was the, the more we cropped with the appropriate inputs, basically the better the systems became. We're getting better nutrient dynamics, nutrient turnover, better nutrient retention in particular, particularly nitrogen. Um, and this is one of the things that really helped us to move from a to these more intensive systems, which up till then would be viewed as not a sustainable practice in Mallee system. But we could see that as long as we knew what our constraints were and addressed those constraints, whether they were disease constraints, whether they were nutrient constraints, we could actually crop these soils um, far more intensively than we previously thought better. And not only more intensively, but and being sustainable, they're actually we could actually show they're actually getting better and better, largely because uh, by putting nutrients or inputs in every year, retaining its doubles every year, we're starting to get much more turnover of carbon in these systems, and that's what was driving the, the biological changes and nutrient changes in these systems. And they were most noticeable on the lighter soils, on the sandier soils, and that's where we were really getting the, the kind of the economic benefits. The heavier soils, the ones with more subsoil issues in them, they really depend on more the exceptional seasons where you've got lots of water to actually see things that are happening. But the year on, year out benefits were being seen on the lighter soils, which could make much better use of the um, limited rainfall. And so we monitored the economics of it as we went through the seasons. And quite, you know, well, it didn't take long to see that the most profitable cropping system was really coming out was the opportunity cropping where we basically cropped cereals in most years. And um, they were I can't remember what the actual numbers were, but they were certainly well um, in advance in terms of profitability. And over the years, we saw that being adopted uh, by the by the farm, especially those that initially involved in the project, and that, that spread to the wider community over time. In relation to uh, the sustainability of these these farming systems, the Probably the key driver there would have been the development of the, the, or the development and acceptance of no-till cropping. It, um, that's probably had the biggest single, single impact. A lot of the erosion that used to be a, a major issue in the Mallee has is, is now declined. Um, as farmers got confidence in no-till, the fact that they could actually crop no-till and um, with the stubble retention package. And I think that's probably been the, the key driver. The other thing that's helps a lot is that understanding of appropriate nutrient requirement. The, to its large extent, the ability, the confidence to put a little bit more nutrient than had been used in the past uh, means you get better crops, more stubble, something more to hold, to hold the soil together. And again, the long-term benefit of the extra stubble in terms of the better biological dynamics that are going on in the soil. What we'll see in the future is um, addressing the issues, new issues as they come up. I mean, farming systems aren't fixed in stone, they're dynamic. As new technologies come along, as new issues come along, they'll adapt and change and they'll change very much in relation to the economic drivers, the, um, input costs, prices that people are receiving, and farmers are going to switch and change to that. And like the future research is going to be very much addressed at aiming at those particular, particular issues as they come along. As the farming systems change, you'll start to question, okay, is that what we've seen in the past? Is that now applied? Do we have to look at new issues? But I think the, the basic fundamentals of it are there in place forever now. I don't think they're going to change greatly.